So this was a win. I'm gonna put these plywood spacers underneath the auger so it will be easier to take on and off. These are 13 millimeter bolts. And that's not looking too good either. Let's see if I can break them loose with a wrench. I originally bought it for an open station three series tractor, which was really a great machine. It was, in my opinion, a little underpowered but a, a good machine. Uh, I, I think it was called a 3320, three series tractor, roughly 33 horsepower. And um, I used it on that tractor up until the last two and a half years when I bought my 3046R. I just, after got 16 years, 17 years of snow blowing on an open station. Um, just got tired of getting hit in the face with the snow. Wanted to show you what the auger bearings look like on an 18 year old snow blower in western New York. Uh, they are pitted, they're rusted, they were not turning smoothly. Saving grace is the auger moves, rotates very slowly. So check your auger bearings. So this is a spacer that goes between the, 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 the snowblower shell and the auger bed. And then these are plates that hold that bearing, that capture the bearing. They're almost like an external race to the bearing. So that cam space have to come off and I believe it gets tapped to the right to loosen it. Wow. Okay. Let's, uh, I'm not wild about this setup. And you know what? So the bearing broke apart, and that was my fear that it wasn't going to be able to get off. And it was going to break apart. And then the question is, how do you get this off? You can see how that cam locks on. something huh bam <laughs> I nicked up the shaft a little I don't think it's weakened it at all it's a solid piece of steel that inner race of the bearing is fixed anyways and it's the only way I could get this thing off um I hope this piece won't come off there we go. So I will polish that up with sandpaper before I reassemble it. Part that got bent up 
that actually the bearing pulled through. This sits behind the bearing. And when it got caught, when I got pawed on the pull strap, the auger, this piece actually went around the bearing and the whole axle pulled through. I do a much better job explaining how the bearing gets reassembled and how the cam bearing lock works on the other side. So we'll move ahead to the disassembly of that side in this video and then I'll explain the reassembly in a couple minutes. Okay, let's go do the other side. On the opposite side, the bearing cam lock set screw was seized and I used a torch to loosen it and it didn't go so well. So I used a drill and drilled out the set screw and then that was fine. Actually it went faster than fooling around with it with a torch. So if this ever happened again in this situation, I would go right to a drill and drill out the set screw. I knew I wasn't gonna reuse that cam lock uh, and such screw and new ones came with a bearing. Two years ago when the when this bearing assembly got pulled apart snow blowing I I had an inexpensive puller and it actually bent as I was pulling it was bending and um, I had it for over 30 years and I purposely went out and bought a new puller set and wanted to use them on this bearing two years ago. I put this off for two years, and let me tell you, they didn't work well. Hindsight, I would go right to my cordless grinder again with a, a, a cutoff, metal cutoff disc on it, and cut the bearings off. It just went so much faster and easier, and actually in the end, which was safer. Smarter, right, as we get more experience. So this time when I grabbed my five inch grinder, with a metal cutoff disc on it. I, I don't bother pounding off the outer part of the, the bearing assembly. I cut right through the, the outside of the bearing, middle of the bearing, inside of the bearing, and just cut right through, and this went much faster. If I was to do this again, I wouldn't waste my time. I would go right to the five inch grinder and the cutoff disc. <laughs> So again, I'm using my 5-inch grinder to take off some surface rust and some paint in preparation to do a quick touch-up on the, the snowblower shell. And again, this 5-inch grinder is a cordless grinder, is a great tool. Switch it up, got the wire brush cup on there, and I'm cleaning it up, ready for touch-up work, and it worked extremely well. And the reason I'm touching it up with the auger out, it's the easiest time to get in there. I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. So, this is the bearing that I'm replacing, and it spins very smoothly. This is a cam lock that holds the bearing in position. If you can see, the bearing, it's got a little ridge in the inside race and it's, it's wide. And it's made for this cam lock goes on that ridge and you spin it and it's not a circle, it's an oval. And when you spin this on the bearing, it tightens down on the shaft as you spin it. Okay, and then it has a set screw that has, if you can see it, form of Loctite on it, red Loctite. So, this goes on first, the cam lock, and, and again, the bearing, inside bearing keeper, I'm going to call it a race, goes on first because I can't fit that over the bearing. So that's already on. I'm going to position the bearing where I want it. I'm going to rotate the cam lock and it's going to hold that bearing in place. It's locked onto the bearing. And again, it's oblong, so as it turns around the bearing, it's going to lock and bite into the shaft. Then I'm going to tap it up. There's a hole on this side. Let's show you. 
And believe me, I'm not an expert at this. My actually friend Dave explained this to me. Okay, now that's got the bearing locked in place. And then I'm gonna tighten the set screw down, if you can see it. I'm gonna tighten that down with an Allen wrench. So that set screw is tight. And then this inner race, so that's not going any way. That's about the alignment where it was before. The inner race goes on it like that. You can see how the bearing functions. The inside of the bearing is stationary. The outside spins on the ball bearing. That goes on like that. Then the outside race. I call it a race. I don't know if that's the correct term. And then the spacer goes on is the next piece that goes on like this. Now, when you put these on, there's a lot of fumbling and bumbling that's happening. Trying to align them. See how they just fell off? Trying to align them loose. When we did it during the winter time, I used painter's tape that worked really good. But I'm gonna do something different on this. I'm gonna use a little super glue. to hold these in place. Now, hopefully that will hold when I slip it in there, if you understand the concept. So they're not all jiggling around. Hopefully that will hold while I fit them. Just take it slowly. Two years ago when we reattached this auger to the snowblower shell, there was three of us and we were fumbling and stumbling with the inner and outer bearing plates and also the spacer aligning the holes and it was somewhat chaotic. This super glue saved the day. Highly recommend using it. I'll tell you people a couple things that really helped me. Having wood blocks as spacers and gluing the cap, the bearing caps on it. Super gluing it helped me tremendously. I no way could I have done it myself. There were three people the last time, uh, Dave and my son and myself, and we were trying to do this, and it was higher, it was like hip height on the machine, and it was very difficult. This was very easy because I had the wood spacers, I super glued the end caps on, the components were dry, and this was a win, big win. All right, let me finish this off. tractor never ceases to impress me. Um, those of you who have a snowblower mounted on a tractor, you know when you pull it off the tractor, especially this 59 inch John Deere snowblower, they are top heavy, off balance, wobbly goblins. And last spring I built, took a, a pallet and put some plywood extensions on it and some wood shims, screwed it together and made this, this snowblower holder which I have dollies under it now, but whether I'm rolling it around on dollies or using forks on a tractor to move it around, it is much easier. Maybe I'll post that video this winter on how to make it. It's pretty simple.
want to keep this channel real and I hope you learn from my mistakes. I put this off too long. Knowing what I know now, if I bought the snowblower new, I would check the bearings, the, the auger bearings, probably every four to five years uh, and probably replace them on the fifth year, depending on how much you use it. Uh, big tip that I can pass on to you, my, my five inch grinder, with a cutoff disc was essential in removing the bearings. I wouldn't even waste time with a puller doing it again. Uh, super gluing the bearing races, bearing race and the, the spacer, super gluing those on on the reassembly was a huge help. And the wood shims under the auger to align it with the holes in these to align it with the holes in the snowblower shell. So um, those were the best advice I can give you if you're doing this. If you ride motorsports uh, off-road, please wear a helmet for your safety and set an example for others. Please respect each other's opinion. And uh, I hope to see you on the trail. Thank you and God bless.